can't do it. I just can't do it. Don't give up, son. You can do it. Hold on to your dream and never let go. Really, Mum? You have a responsibility to make music for the people. Who are these people? Where are these people? How do I find them? Son, they're everywhere. We're live. Oh. We're live! And so, you, really? You seriously? You're yeah, yeah, yeah. We're that enamored by it. I love it. I can see it. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, I love it. As soon as I saw it, I said... That's I the... remember when we had it in... Northeastern. You, you, you. Oh, sorry, Northeastern. No, you know, it, well, well, it was. That's you know, that, that funny, was in, funny, on the electoral roll. That's how it was positioned. But funny enough, my my in-laws just moved down the road. Yeah, in Idris. In yeah. Fort Worth. All oh, right, which shares the same post. Is it the same? No. Well, that was different the same. postcode. Sorry to interrupt. You guys are live. Uh, what? But it, yeah, you guys are live. <laughs> it's uh, that was great. That's that's the that's the that's the rate of profession that we have over here. <laughs> so that's, that C D player yeah. was mm. in your old studio, correct? It was it was indeed, yeah. Yeah. And I did ask you about it. You did ask me about it. Back then. You did, yeah. You did like it. No, there's no doubt about it. There's no question. No... I love the soft <laughs> the soft the soft look at that. Look at that. That's that's Japanese. And you know what? That also the, that moment that you touched that, <laughs> yeah, right, when you put the C D on. Yeah. Meant that Tony Mann was satisfied with the mix or the mastering that you've done. So that's why well, that was the that was the moment. So this is it's like yeah. oh, Tony's finished the mastering. He's now listening to it on his that. gold CD player. He's like, yeah, he must be happy with his work. All smoke and mirrors, mate. I've never been able to dazzle a girl and sell a back of a bush. Okay. I've worked more for thirty fucking years, mate. You know the drill. Anyway, um. Welcome to Mastering Music, Mastering Life. I'm Tony Jack of M. Ants, and uh, alongside me, a good friend, compatriot, is, colleague. Is David Jack the Bear had the problem? That's the guy. <laughs> mate. Mate. <laughs> mate. He's not as much of a rare as he is. Oh, you know. <laughs> that's how we roll. How are you, buddy? Yeah, like yeah, I said, yeah. I feel it's a bit naked, I don't have shoes on. Yeah, well, but they can't see that. No, that's how we roll. Yeah. Put the shoes off studio. No, beautiful to have you here, mate. So it's every, every time we need to catch up with each other, now just now this has to be a podcast so that others can be in amongst our private conversation. Fair enough. To make it happen. That's well, I just find it just as boring as if they were in the well. <laughs> room or conversation, right? It's always a bit that way. Well, anyway, thanks for coming. Oh. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, no, seriously, it's good to see you, buddy. Have a good day. Yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah. Uh, happy uh, 50th birthday, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you too, son. I love you too. Speaking of which, um, we um, we we I, I played the role of your mother once in a film clip, that, yes. <laughs> which we haven't seen for a while. Have you have you got that clip? Oh, that played in the intro. That's uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. I cannot believe it. I still um. Oh, I, should I, don't say, know. I should be saying I love you, mum. I love you. Yeah. I love you too, son. <laughs> mum, I know you're a man. <laughs> long story, son. Long, long story. Anyway, no, seriously, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming, mum. Thank you. How have you been? I've been okay. I've been good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, quite a lot's happened since the last seen you. Yeah. Quite a lot's happened for you. Yeah. I um. I had a shower. Yep. Um, was it was the was it the annual one or the biannual one? There's the, the which. Oh, I did a little track. But no, I had a shower, ate a piece of fruit. And uh, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> a soft, a soft banana. Yeah, very nice. Banana has lots of potassium in it. So. I, I, I believe so. Just don't look at me in the I eye. Mean, Just I don't mean... look at me in the eye when you eat one. Just don't do that. All right, so I'm going to ask you to don't do that. <laughs> Not going to help that cause. Yeah. So, so tell me. Yes, mate. I've always, I always loved this desk. I mean, everyone who sits here probably says something about this desk. You know, looking yeah. at this high end manly gear and the you know the crane song and the, the song prep stuff. Yeah. Because I remember when you got the ma- yeah that's right you got the manly stuff and it's, it was like you know custom crafted with love and care for it. Jack 
It was right there. And I remember when you got that, you were you were at um, Dirt Sing Sing, is that right? Or was it before that? Uh, just before I just before I started Sing Sing, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was uh, I remember the, that was the like nineties. Yeah. Nineties. And that was like the cost of a car. So you could buy a car or buy a mastering uh, you know, limiting compressor. Yeah. So oh do I need a car or do I need a limited compressor? Mm. I'll go with the compressor. Yeah. Makes sense. You understand how it goes. And as, as you would say, and here we are now. And here we are now. Indeed. <laughs> Guys, it's been a long time. How long, how long have we known each other for? 20 odd years? Yeah, 20 plus. 20 plus years. I'll never forget the to first time I met you. Yeah, well, was at Frankie D's house. DJ Frankie D, uh, or was his parents' place in, in, Clifton. in Clifton Hill. Correct. I was up there with one Philip Krakides. Philip Krakides. And um, George Balasinos. Yes, the Rickster. Is he? How is the Rickster? Uh, he's good. I haven't seen him for about oh a year or so. Yeah, but he's, he's traveling well. I haven't seen him for about two years because yeah, yeah he's not. He's good. He's good. He's got like, two kids. Yeah. yeah. So I met you, Frankie D's. Yeah. And uh, Frank, Frankie D's. Frankie D's place. He was. I don't know what you were doing there, but, but you should were you there. tell people who Frankie D is? Frankie D. Who, Frankie D. One of one of the great DJs that this town's ever produced. How that guy did not go to international stardom is beyond me. Frankie D is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Without doubt. I haven't, I haven't seen Frankie for a long time. But I, I, I ran into him uh, not so long ago. So is he still DJing or what's he up to? Oh, I can't remember. I know he had a little boy, I think. He, that's right. I, I believe he did. He, uh, which you did. You've done something similar. I have a I have a child. You have yes. a child, a child, a dependent. I have a dependent. Mm. How do you find being someone dependent on you? It's, how do you find being a How do you find having a dependent being it's some? Yeah, pretty weird. Yeah, because I mean, you look at me and anyone who knows me says like, how does how do I have children? Well, it might. Oh, bothers. well, that's all put us. You know, that's put like a down on. On the evening, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The missing link, right there. No, no, there. no, no. Actually, no. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. What, what everyone says about having children, they're, they're all correct. It's, it's, it's pretty fucking incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I think nothing prepares you for it. Nothing prepares you for it. And, um, and I don't come from a background of knowing how to bring children up or being around children or anything like that. So, um. But my wife is pretty awesome, so yeah, and her family are very good. You know. uh, yeah, well, it's it's funny. I've, I've, but here, the other thing is this, and people think that because we can procreate, that there seems to be some automatic program embedded that automatically makes us paternal or maternal. Well, see, what and I know is that any person, well, any kind of you know, physically. Right or whatever you call it. I know. Sorry, I, I'm not politically correct, and hopefully that's distorting into the microphone. Um, uh, anyone can have children, you know. By and large, most people can have children, yeah. right? You need, uh, you need a, you need sperm, or you need an egg, and you need a place to put it, right? Um, that means that anybody can have children, including fuckheads. Yeah. Well, you need to go. You, you need to. Well, you need to jump through more fucking hoops to get, say, uh, a jet ski license. I mean, what? I mean, what's having a kid now? It's a squirt in the guts. The right time of the month. <laughs> a a, a certain that, incubation period, and you, you, and you it's that, done. It's done. Put, Nature does the rest. You put that eloquently. Anyway, you're talking about. Anyway, so so, so, so anyway, no, anyway, so anyway, so Fra uh, it's, having uh, Fra children Fra is awesome. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, so Frankie D. That's the first time I met you, and it was interesting because. You've always been, shall we say, enigmatic. Um, in, you've always been an interesting character. But, it was, it, interesting. but, but what I found interesting, now this is what I found interesting, I remember yeah. I told you this a little bit later. When I first met Dave, you know, Dave, just this uh, obtuse, obscure, interesting character, to say the least. Yeah, look at me now. But Common. Completely. Plain, vanilla. Plain. Um, but, but, I, but it was interesting because... People just thought you were a fucking weirdo, and you are. But that's good. But having said that, that's a but, but I but I just knew straight. Away, I said, "There's something more to this guy. This guy acts like a dumb cunt, but there's something a little bit more going on here." 
and uh, a little bit more and personal. I, yeah, so uh, so I so I thought I, I need to get, I need to know this guy. I really need to get to know who this person is because there's more to him than what he gives off. And uh, I'm glad I went with my instinct because um, it's been a good relationship, mate. It's been fun. We've had a lot of shit. Well, we've had a lot of good times. A lot of good times. A lot of good times, my friend. Good times and classic rock, rock. and roll. You know it. You know. So anyway, uh, so I remember meeting you there, but I want to get back to this kid thing. Okay. This, is, this is really interesting because I've, I've always found it fascinating, the whole idea of, you know, I'm being a father myself of uh, four children now, um, is um, I've never, ever considered myself to be naturally paternal. Yeah, or, I or, agree. I'm the same. Or, or really, uh, I <clears throat> never, ever thought myself as being a great dad, a, a good provider, but not a great dad. I was certainly not a, a present father with my first two. I don't know what a good dad is or a good mother is. And not, 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 um, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know what good or bad is, and not because of background or judging, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't think it exists. There's no good. There's no bad. Well, uh, what do you, what, 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 how, how, well, well, you as a dad, then, okay. Yeah. As a father, where, what are the things that you'd like to achieve as a father with Raphael? I don't even think like that. No? No. It's just like, that's my son, and I'll, you know, do what I think is... Good or provide, right. provide him with, you know, opportunities, that's all, you know? Yeah? That's it. I'm not religious, I'm not political, you know that. Yeah, cool. right? yeah, yeah, same. Um, you know, I believe in absolutely nothing. I believe in that we're just all a bunch of random events, and that's probably a political statement in itself. Mm -hmm. But, you know... I, you uh, really think it's all random? I believe in absolutely, and let me say this with a dramatic pause. I believe in absolutely nothing. Wow. Right? Don't do I believe in nothing? I don't, I, you know, maybe it gets me into trouble, but I just don't believe in anything. I believe that you are sitting in front of me mm. and there's some air here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, I've just, I've just. As opposed to saying believe in nothing, do you, is it. Is actually, it, I've just contradicted myself. Well, <laughs> well yes, you, you've given us a belief system of some sort. <laughs> no, what, what, all right, okay, what about the notion then that you just don't know? That you. Because well, nobody knows. Well, really. maybe I don't know, but I don't care either. That's what I'm trying to say as well. And that's a good point you make because I'm I'm coming more and more to a point now where you know you go. So through... religion is such a boring topic. I mean, it's just as boring as politics, or you know. So. Well, the idea of religion is okay. The tenets of religion are okay. It's it's just what they've done with it. The whole, no, the whole I don't think tenets. Man, man's I don't think anything with either anything relating to any. You know, there, there's there's you know. I don't want to say it, but it's just like I don't believe in anything. And you know, if cool. I believe in something, great. You know, you, you, there must be a lot going in your life yeah. that you need to think about. You know, some, you know, the bunny rabbit chocolate. I don't know. Yeah. The zombie comes back with the mm. chocolate and the mm. bunnies. I don't know. Well, no, well, I don't. I don't buy into all that either. I don't. But I've come to a point now where I'm becoming. And what's happier. even? Hang on. And I'm, what's even I, funnier? What's yeah, even funnier? On. What's even funnier is, um, uh. People who become passionate about it and then they, because I get politics and religion mixed up, and then people who vote, I find that hysterical. Mm. <laughs> I find that, well, I find that the funniest thing I've ever, I ever come across. Yeah. You vote. Why would you vote? <laughs> well, why? Why would you even care? To vote. I guess I'm. I guess I. I say. I say to people, oh, I'm a non-practicing nihilist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I just don't care. Yeah. Well, I. I care, but not to the point where it. Uh, it. It was an issue for a while where when I started asking big questions of life, I was. I was really down with. I need to know. I need to know what are the answers. What are the answers? And now I'm at a point where no one knows the fucking answers, and it doesn't really matter anymore. It's more. Oh, I'm more at a point. You know what? I'm happier living in the question, in the space of the question, and just not, yeah, not wasting. Good. Well, really, all, I've I, got, I all we've got is the now. It's all, 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 all I've learned. All, animals, is that, is that animal, been... animals live in the now. They don't, totally. they don't live in Go the Go to a dog and ask it what time it is. See what it yeah. tells you. Yeah. And I love animals. But you eat them. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you love to eat them. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have a relationship with the animals I eat. No. I don't humanise the, you know, the animals that I eat. Well, see, that's part of the problem. But we don't have the relationship with the animals that we eat. No one understands where their food comes from these days. You know, oh, where, where did that meat come from? Oh, in a, in a plastic shrimp, shrink, shrunk, you know, sh- uh, so, pre shrunk. But, but you're saying to talk about politics now. No, I'm not. Can the I do po- it? You know, the politics of diet. Uh, no, sorry, no, it's not, it's not politics. Because I, like, I will eat anything. I will try yeah. absolutely anything. But, but I think it's nice to actually know where your food's coming from. Sure. How, that, that's all. I mean, that relationship, just understanding what's involved. From my fridge. Okay. If it has to be refrigerated. Well, we have a pantry. Yeah. A butler's pantry or? Sorry? A butler's pantry? What's a butler's? Butler's. You know, it's in oh, G- butler's. Jeeves. Uh, sorry. Jeeves. Yeah. sorry, a butler's pantry. Uh, no, it's just, uh, it's kind of two, uh, it's two cupboards, you know, you open it up. No, uh, two what? cupboard doors. Sorry, yeah. I can't even, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I've been drinking all day. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's where it comes from. I haven't been like drinking magic. all day. Is, is it's just like something I say bun- all the time. Is it like the, ch- the chocolate bunny brings it there, or? Uh, if the, cho- the zombies? Do the zombies come back and put the food in there for you, or how does it work? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Brains, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so listen, you've um, a lot of people would know you as a guy who's made the genre of music known as acid house slash techno. Would, would that be reasonable? Yeah, acid yeah, house, yeah, yeah. acid techno, techno, acid. When did you first come across? When did you first come across acid? As in the style of music, and because we all know that you are not a consumer of any psychedelics or any kind of drug, cigarette of any kind. What well, uh, you say? Like, when did I come across acid what, house, what, or what? when did I come across something that was acid? When did you? All right. When did you first come across? Something that was acid. Well, when you when you first heard, when did you first ex- hear acid? When I first hear acid, okay, that's a good, that's a really good question. When did I hear acid? Um, I heard acid. I heard acid in. What did I hear acid in? It must have been. I think I must have been. I tell you what, I heard acid. Okay, when I first heard Devo, I heard acid. Right. So when I was a kid, you know, the early 90s, uh, early 80s, I should say, when I heard Devo, you know, we are not men, we are Devo, mm-hmm. I thought, that's acid. I didn't know it then because I wasn't I wasn't that sophisticated as a, as a teenager. <laughs> Neither am I sophisticated now as an adult. But mm-hmm. um, that was acid to me. That was like, this is freaky. Yeah. So that was the first time I heard... Acid in inverted commas. Yeah, yeah. Then the first time I heard Acid House yes. would have been uh oh it would have been something like, you know, towards the later eighties would have been something like Stack a Humanoid. Yeah. And I didn't know it was acid, but that was acid. Yeah. Well I remember my first experience of listening to Acid House eighty eight at the uh Copa Night Club in Toronto. Right, and, wow. Um, there was a DJ there called MK, guy from MK, New, MK New, a guy from New York who was playing there. New and, York, and he was, um, you know, he was doing pro, he was playing private parties for Madonna and people like that back in the day. And uh, and he bought these weird, and he wiped the floor. He completely wiped the fucking floor with with this shit. Because people were like, what the fuck is this? You know, and uh, I was just really like, wow, this is really different. This is really really different. You know, I've never heard anything quite like it. I never heard anything like it. And then, but it took off. Yeah. I was, you know, we were at, we were going to, in Melbourne, it was like Chasers and Checkpoint Charlie and Chevron. That was like 87, 88, mm-hmm. something like that. And yeah, then we heard, we were hearing acid. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you were quite enamoured by it, I assume. Well, I don't know. I loved, you know, I loved electronic music and going to these, you know, and there's also Pure. Do you remember... Um, Mark James did Pure at the back of the palace in St Kilda. That was acid. That was incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a, a, you know, it was like a club and he blackened the whole place out. And also Maze as well was really important. Uh, he blackened the whole place out with like, you know, um, 
you know, black plastic. It was just like one strobe. Mm-hmm. And like you walked in, you were walking into acid. Mm-hmm. You may not be hearing just acid, but I'm saying you walked in as like, it took hold of all your senses. Yeah. You know, you remember the smoke machines in the late eighties and the yeah, early nineties? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and people were smoking as well in nightclubs. No it was like, this is like, I, I don't know where I am. And not that that's a bad thing, uh, but still felt safe. And, you know, today you go to night, well, you go nightclubs, you don't, there's maybe not as safe. I don't know, maybe I'm just older. But then you had, there was a real sense of community in that it didn't matter if you didn't know anyone, you felt this kind of safeness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about that. But no, 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 I will. Maybe because I'm a father yes. now, you see. Quite so possibly. That's, so safety is important. Yeah. No. So you think we're like so you think current nightclub culture is lacking that? You think it doesn't exist? Well, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be an expert in, you know, current nightclub well, culture. You get, well, you you still get out and about a little bit. You still do gigs <clears throat> from you know. So what do you feel when you go? I mean, obviously I know you just go in, do your gig, you're not gonna be partying until, you know. No, no three o'clock, you know. No, I, I perform and you know, I come and I perform and you know, not much has changed. <laughs> you know, young people go to nightclubs, listen to loud music, drink alcohol. Yeah. And get involved. Find, you know, partners and yeah. enjoy themselves. Nothing much has changed. Nothing much has changed. People like to dance. They do. <clears throat> people Something like, tribal about it. People like to listen to loud music. They do. Well, I've always said that what the first sound we ever hear in the worm is the the heartbeat of your mum. So rhythm is something that's innate in, and that's irrespective whether you're an electronic head or a rock head. There's something about a beat that just drives things. Oh, my son moves. You know, he just he's he loves just the music from ads, and he just he just moves all the time. Fair. You know, he's always wriggling. We you call are, him. We call him a wriggle bum because he's always wriggling. Yeah. You, know? you um, you're going to. Is that something you're going to encourage him to do? Or you encourage him to do what? With music. I mean, I mean, he's going to. He's obviously going to grow up in an environment anyhow that where music. He will is do around. what. He will do, He'll do whatever the fuck he, he wants. Yeah, I understand that. But you, you don't think you'd. He um, will aim low, aim low. Yeah, and it's, a, it's all a bonus in there. None of this saying stupid. Oh, you know, you're so wonderful and perfect. And, you know. <laughs> have your bubble burst you know no i'm joking i'm just, you know of course just whatever opportunity i can afford him absolutely yeah. you know? so how'd you how'd you learn all your all your stuff like it was, was it just uh you just, you just self-talk with how did i because i've always i've always i've i've never been a tech head ever i'm the least technical person that exists on the planet so well, i was always ve- i was very much a technophobe and very much fearful of technology well, and you got all I, this technology in front of you how do you but say this, you know but this is different this is this is you know when you when you're getting into the world of synths and sequences and programming you understand i didn't touch a computer i was 20 fucking nine mate 29 yeah so I, I did even and i grew up in the era of ataris and commodores and yeah. all that sort of shit and not nah, just, just we're not we're it. not far off we're not far off in age you know you're only a few years older than me yeah just a few well, you know, but but I mean, I was born nineteen sixty nine, sixty three. Okay, so there's, I what's what's about two divided by one, hold the three, carry the four, um, so about, log ten. <laughs> you got a slide rule there. <laughs> so it's like six years difference, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, no, but six years is quite still quite a bit of difference, though. I mean, you grew up with a lot more technology than I did. No, no, we 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 had one computer at school. Yeah. At university, I think we had one computer as well. What did you, what did you study? Well, I studied, um, I did, oh, I've done a number of things. I'm still studying. <laughs> no, you are. You're, I'm interested. Uh, you got to tell us about that, actually. I studied, I did a Bachelor of Fine Art in Media Arts. Okay. So I did, uh, you know, uh, sound and film. I started doing painting and printmaking. I always wanted to do fine art, visual art, but then I moved to the Media Arts. And that's where I... You know, started dabbling with technology. It was like tape loops, and mm-hmm. digital delays, and then um, the uni bought. Well, they had a an Ensonic sampler. You know, the EPS, mm-hmm. which was like, I think they had the EPS sixteen plus, if I remember correctly. And it was like had twenty two seconds of sample. Time. 
That was a lot. That was a lot. Um, so really, just from doing uh, post production on student film, that's where I kind of started, and already going to nightclubs and being part of that, you know, dance music culture, and they kind of all converged. You know, um, <clears throat> how did I learn the technology? I was always interested in, you know, how the technology worked. It was quite not rudimentary. It was, it was perhaps simpler. Uh, the technology had perhaps you know one knob per function, mm -hmm. so it was perhaps easy to to uh, follow the path of what a knob or function did. And then uh, when software started to emulate that, it was easy to you know. But I always uh, you know I, I always find software to be a so, you know the mouse. This thing is this thing mm -hmm. is the worst creative tool known to man you know i mean like you know, you know, like hang on let me make something for you hmm. yeah. you know sorry i just i just opened no, no, that's uh, all right. no, that's okay. delete all yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean but but isn't, isn't this now we got all these um but now there's more um interactive um interactive you know, i teach in interactive it? composition <laughs> um Right. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I don't use all that much of this mouse, but but this is why I love analog because it's just so tactile. But the technology is not making all this technology is not making us smarter or anything like that. It's such a it's such a furphy. It's like, well, you know, you, 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 we we think this technology is helping us. It's like it's not. The world needs creative people, you know, because um, the technology is so inane. I mean, look at look at smartphones and. Like, yeah, they they're not. But also, you know, or they with you know artificial artificial intelligence and stuff. It's like oh, it's, artificial it's, intelligence. It's the, going to you know, it's going to change the world. You know, oh wow. You know, it's like no, it's not. You need human beings to do the program. You need human beings to facilitate all that. You know, artificial yeah. intelligence is like yeah, oh, oh, we'll 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 have a formula that will predict you know stock levels and things like that. You know, it's like great. You know. What's the benefit to the world? I'm not sure, mm. you know. Well, I'm with you. I'm, look, I'm totally with you. A robot mm. will fix my broken arm. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Is it going to happen? Uh, probably not in my lifetime. No. Well, some interesting developments yeah. now with nanotechnology and shit, which, where they're doing in medicine, all these little robots uh, that are going in to repair have you, cells and shit. Have you seen the film Idiocracy? No. Well, well you should see it. Yeah? Yeah. What's it about? Idiocracy is, is a pretty good film. It's an insight to our future, you know? Okay. When was it made? Uh, made the last 10 years, something like that. Sure, a lot's changed though, since then, though, since I would have created that. I mean, uh, I mean, if you watched it today, okay. So you still, you still think it's relevant today to watch today? Does it still have merit? Does it still, is, is, what, is what it's saying back then still relevant today and still? Absolutely. So what's the premise? What are they saying? Uh that the medical world was too worried about making, about investigating uh, 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 breast enlargements and uh, uh, pedal erectile dysfunction. dysfunction. Yep. Right? And that's what all our energies were put into. You know, so... Was that a Michael Moore film? Did he make that? No, 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 no. Sounds like just the title. Yeah, it's, it sounds Moore like a Michael Moore. Son, you, know, who, who, you know, who's Michael Moore? Is he? Bombing from Columbine. And oh, yeah. That oh, guy. Gosh. It just it just sounds like it, oh. it, it's a movie title that sounds like he would have been behind he, it. He's a religious person, you know? No. Nah. Of course he is. You know, all those righteous films, you know? Mm. <laughs> save the world, you know? Save the world. I'm going to save the world, you know? <laughs> If I don't save so, the world, who will save it? So, so you don't think people should be out there putting hey, an alternative view? I mean, do whatever you like. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, hey, man, I'm peace, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I love the idea though that people are still putting out whatever it is for you to at least explore. You yeah. know, even though they're coming out there, even if they are self righteous about it, I still think, hey, like, from, give an example on what? Did you ever see that documentary Zeitgeist? No. 
Okay. Well, again, someone could look at a movie like Zeitgeist and say, save the world, save the world, and, and give that um, critique about it. But again, I... Because these people are bored. They've got nothing else better to do with their lives, you know? I make, I make electronic dance music. I make, I make bangers. Bangers. Right? That's what I do. I make bangers. Yeah. Right? That's what I do. I'm not trying to save the world. I make bangers. You know what? I like making bangers. Nothing wrong with that. It gives me satisfaction. Yeah. If you like it, well, they, they, fantastic. Well, these if people, you don't well, like but it, but the same, but the same rule applies to these people too. Oh no, they're no, 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 docu- no, They're making no, doc- no, but they're trying to say to people, hey, listen, you know, look at look at these, you know, look what's happening. Look how bad this is. Look how good this is. Look how bad this is. It's like you know, hey, you know, we're human beings. We're horrible. We're a horrible creature. You know. <laughs> It's not going to, you know, a person is not going to rectify it. Neither is religion or politics. No, no, or... I, no I don't think anything's going to Oh, it's the bloody it. government's fault, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it, it's, it's those, those bloody people who eat, you know, the milk or whatever, you know? Yeah. That's like... People get their food from the pantry, you know? That's right. They're the ones you've got to worry about. That's right. They're the ones you've got to worry about. Well, I, I, I just find it. I, I, I just think it's I, interesting. You I, just, you, you know, you just apply. You just apply a filter, Dave. You just apply a filter to it. All. That's why I say it. I, I have four different types of rice in my pantry. Yeah. Go on. Basmati. Yeah. Long grain. Yeah. Medium grain. Yep. And jasmine. Okay. Do you have a particular preference? Or no, because they, depends, they right? all have a different. Uh, you know, they all have a different context. Well, you know, jasmine has jasmine. It's it's fragrant. It smells like jasmine. Yeah. Right? Jasmine is good for, you know, South East Asian dishes. Yeah. Right? True? Well, I've, uh, I've, I've appara- appara- I don't know. Apparently. I'm not an authority. I'm asking. You know? Well, you're asking the wrong person. You know, the medium grain rice is good for... Uh, no, actually, I've got five because I've also got the... Um, I've also got the... Uh, Arborio Abor- rice. Of course. Risotto, mate. Now that is a skill. So, so life can are you, be. Are you good at risotto? Give us your risotto. Give us your risotto tip. Give us a good risotto tip to make a good risotto. A good. Or are you want you know the the key to a good risotto? Go on, tell me. Heat your stock. Heat Don't stock. ever put cold stock mm. into your um into your pan where you got the rice. Okay. Never. And you just load it little bit by little bit. Is there a technique well, I, involved I, here? You or? all do it in the one pot, but you have the the um you have the stock. You know, not boiling, but quite hot. Okay. So on the verge. And saute, you know, make sure you, when you add the wine, that it goes through. So what we're talking about? Religion. Yeah. No, don't talk about religion. No, that's right. So, so you're doing a PhD. Yeah, why, why? Why are you asking me that? Because I'm fascinated to know more about it. Because I remember you, you were telling me while you were going through the process of, so what's this innate of? Uh, my employment. Okay. So I, I you know, I, you, I stay employed. I've you, got a. I've you're got gainfully employed. Ch- are you gainfully employed? Gainfully employed. Well, I've got a child now, as you know. I do. And, you know, my wife likes nice things. Yep. I like nice things. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've well, always, you're, always... you're a man that's got five different kinds of rice in his pantry. So there you go. Yeah. So you're at Melbourne Uni. I, you, what, no, what? I work at Melbourne Uni. I okay. Work, I work, well, what, yeah. all right. So what are you doing at Melbourne Uni? Is that, is that where you're doing the PhD? or? Is... No, I'm not. I'm actually, I work at Mel- the University of Melbourne. In what capacity? Uh, what is your title? What do you do? How okay. Do you, how do you, how do you <coughs> earn? Right. Okay, if you could just stop swiveling your chair and sit down and relax. And those who are watching, if you could just take a deep breath, because I will have to explain this. Okay. I am a lecturer in music. The program is interactive composition, and I am employed by the Melbourne Conservatorium of Music, the faculty of the VCA and Melbourne Conservatorium of Music at the University of Melbourne. Excellent. I am doing my PhD in composition Mm -hmm. at Monash University. Go ahead, you are next in queue. Thank you. Next call, thanks. Thanks, thank you, call. So how did this all come about? Well, I'm an overeducated art fuck who likes electronic music, and I mm. kept going to university so I could get access to studios and gear. Yeah. 
and I became somewhat of an accidental uh, academic. Academic, but actually, no, I actually really enjoyed. I enjoy teaching because when you teach, you actually learn a lot about your own practice and what you do. So, I am saying this sincerely. It's, it's, you know, I actually do. I, I pinch myself that I, I teach people what I do, or you know, or how I do, and you know, I see you know, their successes, it's it's quite humbling. You know? It is, yeah. it is, I agree. I think as someone that mentors kids, it's I agree that the, the whole principle, that, you know, the Russians say, when I when I teach, I learn. And so the more you outwardly, that's right. you know, you, you do. And there's something very satisfying about yeah. um, being around kids and... and can watch, I get a glass of water? It. Yes, you can, go. go. But there's, some, go, but there's something, but it, no, but there's definitely very satisfying. Yeah, good answer, good answer. yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. Nice knowing you. But no, no, seriously, dealing with kids is great and watching them uh, because particularly when it comes into the, uh, there you go, love it. You want to gargle on that too for a sec? But I think when it comes especially to the whole um, kids who are artistic and creative, um, well, they, I think they benefit. I think they benefit. Technology is not going to save the world. It's creative people because <laughs> you need creative thinkers to be able to contextualise all this I, I completely agree. Yeah, you know, I completely agree. But the, that, but that create that uh, that that creativity needs to be nurtured somehow. I think there's people like us that help nurture that along for kids and help them understand that because art, creative, artistic, anything creative or artistic in this culture anyway is not seen as a relevant thing. It's a great hobby, but it's not a great career choice or lifestyle choice. So I think. Oh, that's cultural. So you you've grown up with that, you know. Well, I did. Well, like, well, I did, I did, but I think even generally speaking, you'll find that you know, people don't uh, see it as a as a valid thing, and I want to change that in my own little way. I don't want to save the world, but you know, I want to sort of make make a little bit of a difference. And I think with what you're doing, you're doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, you know, is helping kids out, passing on knowledge, helping them along, encouraging them, supporting them. I mean, isn't that what we want? If we want more creativity, don't we want to support that and help kids get on with that? Get out there, mm. do more of the same, and then they can do the same for other kids along the line. If that's what they want to do, sure. Yeah, well, I think it's a lot. It's I don't, you know, do. I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying you impose it on them, enforce it on them, but, but there are... Well, this, there is are what, those... this is what I do. This is what, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I enjoy it. I'm not trying to take anything away from it, but I'm saying it's kind of like my... Tr my trade, so to speak. Yeah. Know? It's what I wanted to do. I'm 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 doing it. I you know, whilst I, I teach, I also make as well. You can't be you, you can't teach young adults or whoever, you know, any type of adults if you're not making, especially in the creative arts, doesn't doesn't matter what the creative, you know, practice is, is that you can't you know, you can't uh, guide or teach people if you did it a while ago. You know, it's kind of like a university model, isn't it? You, you need to be a current practitioner and do current research in what you what you teach. Yeah, and I think that's great. It's like you know, I, I I make and I I teach, and through my making, I actually teach as well. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably um, the best learning model, which how it was. Back in my day, yeah, le learning, learning, and interning under people that were actually doing the job for real, day in, day out, as opposed to people that were just um, well versed and schooled in a, in a particular thing. In particular, when it comes to the, the, the theory, and you know, one of my things, don't have to bug there, but one of the things that has been on my mind a lot of late, and that is, you know, what happens to these kids who. You know, they go to university, they spend their money, they get all this knowledge, and it's all good. But then, what happens to them after that? You know, what, where, what, how do they transition out of there into being able to take that knowledge and that theory and make it work for them in a in a real world, you know, way? Well, that's up to the individual. That's not, you know. Yeah, I think, but a lot of in, a lot of individuals, though, again, because the cultural influence uh, are usually shooting themselves in the foot before they even get fucking started. Because they're told get a fucking real job, get a nine to five. Go, I mean, and that's gonna part. That's part of it. Look, I don't think that you can be a creative these days and not have to go and do part time work and support yourself along the way. But oh, but, I'm, but I'm also when I say creative, I mean 
creative in a broad sense. I mean, you still have people who do, uh, you know, technical jobs. Uh, technical, you know, would be, you know, health or finance or whatever the industry mm -hmm. may be. Mm -hmm. You still need creative people. Everything's, to, you know, even in, in the that. financial course, you've got to be, you know, of course, it, everything requires a level of creativity, but I'm talking more in, in the musical context. Yeah. You know? That is not seen as real work, and so these kids it's go all, out there. It's all and, transferable and, skills. So yeah. it's all, a lot of things that you, you know, a lot of things that I guess you know I teach is also it's transferable. You know, it's it's creative problem solving. You know, that's what it is. Oh, here's just here's a couple of set of tools and some yeah. some context, but really it's it's creative problem solving. Who doesn't need that? You know, there's people think, oh, hang on, oh, oh. I'll, I'll get an app and an app will do that for me. It's like, no, an application can't do that for you. A piece of software can't do that for you. A piece of hardware can't do that for you. It's, you know, it's... it's you don't think it helps? But what about just the notion these are just tools? You, your creativity is there to find ways to use those tools. Oh, yeah, to do of things. course. Yeah, of course. But right. I'm saying, you know, by and large, you know, it still starts with the person. You know, there's that old adage, that, that, that cliche, you know, you want to bring it back to music, you know, instruments don't make music, you know, people make music. So Agreed. you've got people who, you know, there's lots of guitars in the world, there's yeah. lots of synthesizers or whatever it may be. So you, so you could make a guitar sound without a guitar? Could I make a guitar sound? sound without, without technology or without something else to facilitate? I could, you could make a guitar sound without a guitar these days, absolutely. Using what? Your creativity or using technology? Uh, well, it needs both. It needs a marriage of both. Ah, okay. So it's not so just... If I, so if it, I contradicted myself. No, I'm not saying contradict Oh, myself. sorry. No. Oh, oh, you're, you're... oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, sorry. That's it. Thanks. To... <laughs> but you know what I mean. I, I hear what you're saying. All I'm... It, it, Are you what you're saying is right. It's a marriage of both. It's still too political and religious. That distort again, good. Yeah. <laughs> John, you're saying no, 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 your no. show, mate. No, it's your show. This is about no, you. No, no, I insist. No, no, no. I won't, no. I won't have it. I no won't. one wants to hear oh. me. my nasally voice. You know, you know, you know. Here you go. You know. Yeah, I must have charged it. Some people in this room have heard my voice. You know, I've got an ex student in the room. She's heard my voice a lot. You know. Talk about education. There you go. Wow. Well, I think you. Un I think you underplay just exa what you actually have done and what you do, man. You really do. I think uh, you underplay. I know. I know you're taking the piss and having some fun because that's the kind of guy you are. But you know, all shit aside. The um, it's the arm the armrest that keeps coming off. If you're wondering why I keep fiddling over here in the, uh, so I fix that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. This is why we this is, see. This is the budget of this uh, podcast. I remember okay. when you were. I remember when you were building this studio. And I first walked in this room, I was like, "Good country, Australia." Not bad. Yeah, I was very, very impressed. Well, thanks, mate. Because I never, because I've never been part of, or I never knew someone, you know, closely that was building a, you know, a studio to a spec like this. You know, I've been to studios, you know, great studios, yeah. but never to a, a specification. And then to see it actually, you know, unravel. Well, that was a bit of insanity, wasn't it? Yeah. My, my accountant thought I was completely crazy. Everyone, a lot of people thought I was crazy. That's all right. But you That's need fine. But you, you need, need you need creative people, right? You need creative people. So do you, so did you need the technology to build it, or was you know? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a marriage of both, you see. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, yeah. It, uh, it all it all came from a thought, a crazy uh, idea. Uh, okay. And here we are. And we're going to do it again, David. We're really? Gonna, we're going to rinse and repeat the process. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I is, it right. even more, is, it, is it more insane now to actually do it? Like, seriously? Do you think it's more insane? I don't... I, I, what, I, to build a mastering studio? Mastering studio, facility, yeah, do workshops and stuff like that. Yeah. I've always said that when you engage a mastering engineer... That you engage the person and not the technology. Mm. So you still need 
A little bit of those. You still, you know, like you want to be a taxi driver, you need a taxi, right? You can... mm. Or a tuk tuk. Whatever, right? Mm. And I always said that, oh, when, when I remember, well, still today, you know, when I say that you do my mastering, it's like, well, no, I'm paying Tony for his ears. I'm paying Tony for his, you know, his informed opinion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or I'm not making myself clear. So yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So whilst my... so mm -hmm. whilst whilst you still have to complete a job and a function, what I'm really paying for is you, you know, doing the work. On the track. I was I was gonna mimic I was gonna like do someone else, but yeah. you know. That's right. It's a tiny part of it. I mean, really. I mean, what... no, no. It's it's a it's a big part. It's like again, it's like it's not the it's not the instrument. It's the person. So, whilst you you know, people can grab a shitty guitar or rudimentary hardware or software, whatever it is. It's like a lot of uh, when we talk about you know composition students and music students, when they discover that oh the music that they like has been you know, it was quite simple to make. Oh, you know, there's that kind of revelation. It's like, yeah, it, it's not, it's not the instruments or the tools. It's the person, and having the great idea is really important. I agree. I didn't realise you had an API. I do. Guilty. Yeah. Good country. It is. No, it is. No, but we will do it all again, Dave. Okay. We're going to try it all again and uh, see how we go. But this time using it as a place where kids can come and actually do um, some real world, ex this whole real world experience stuff, albeit, you know, it's not like a three or four year internship, you know, but it's still just a place where kids can actually experience some real world. And when you say kids, you're saying like, you know, ten year olds, five year olds, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, thirty five okay. or so. So okay. anyone that I young adults, young adults, okay, who, who, you know, biologically could be my kids, if you know what I mean. Biologically, you've confused me. Well, I'm, uh, easy, uh, I'm uh, easily confused. That's all right, mate. That's all right. But they're okay. you know, but they're kids. I you know, I love them as my own David Haberfeld. I love them as my. There you go. That's a good. I movie. love that click. You know, it's a good little click. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a grey hill switch. It's pretty good, you know. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. You've you've got a mouse pad. I do. Yeah, someone made it for me. It's a custom. Made. Anyway, but the point I want to make is that I um I think that what I'm what I'm trying to achieve is to do something that provides a something that helps kids transition out of university into you know how do they how do they pop into you know doing stuff for themselves you know. They have just for, those, got to, for the ones who the ones who choose to do so, you know. My obviously. my advice is to those people are to keep your eye on the prize. You know, everyone's got to do shitty jobs, but the shitty job doesn't define us. Yeah. You know, it's the eye on the prize. It's you know, it's keep making, keep making. You know, if you want the world to hear what you do, you got to keep making, and yeah. you got to keep putting it out there. Like the great question is that I have students say, oh, I've done this and I'm thinking you're there's a label or a publisher or whatever the, the context may be. Oh, someone else is interested in it. Should I do it? Yes. It's like, where, where, you know, what is the reasoning for not doing it? Well, I, I, I like the idea of um, when so why should you do it? It's like the same reason my, my dog Aaron would lick his balls because he could. Yeah, because you can. It's simple as that. You do it because you, you can, and you like it, and you love it. And this is what I'm saying before about encouraging kids to, to do it. There are kids who really are enthusiastic. They want to go out. They want to do shit. And as I said, you know, culturally, they're shot in the foot. They shoot themselves. Yes, I agree. It's up to the – it's definitely an individual thing. You're not going to get every single kid out there, despite the fact they have a passion for it, that they're going to do it. But there are those who, with I think, with the right um, guidance – and um, in, in, and helping them so they can help themselves, they can do some really great things. But they, again, I I I'm inspired by all this shit, man, because I was mentored by fucking amazing people as a kid who didn't know me from a bar of shit, 
but yet they took time out to take me on their wing because they just saw how ridiculous and enthusiastic I was. And so they said, right, you know, like, and again, you can only help a kid that wants to help themselves. But having said that, there are those kids that are kind of on that tipping point and they, deep down, they really want to do it, but they just feel that they just need a little, just, again, I, I like to think of myself as a domino. I want to be a domino. Just if I can tip a domino, that helps set off a chain reaction and that kid goes off on his path. I may never know or hear about this fucking kid and that's fine. But if you can be that person that sets them off, that's all you really need to do. And sometimes it's all it takes, mate. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story about Tony Jack the Bear Mans, okay? I'm about to change things up. Ready? So I've known Tony 20 odd years, okay? Now, when I met Tony, he was about 250 kilos. Is that right? Give or take 20. No, 170. Yeah, that's right. Close enough. So round figures. Yeah. So Tony had a lot of hair, drank a lot of coke. I remember one of the one of the caveats every time we used to go to the studio was like bring a bottle of coke. Remember? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Bring a bottle of coke and yeah. and don't bring you know one liter. Don't bring two liters. Back in the nineties, you used to be able to buy three liters of coke. You did. Now I don't drink coke. Well. I, mean, I drink Coke, but I'm, it's not something I would buy. I bought it for you. Yeah. So Tony would sit in his throne and master your music. And then he would go over to the the soft touch CD player. What the the Sony? What is it? The um, Sony CDP X three thousand. The Sony. Uh, I, you know yeah. that 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 that's 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 that's, that's, that's for me in your will. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, Tony, uh, I think the first time, actually, the first time you mastered something for me was in your lounge room in the northern suburbs. Correct. And then you had the studio that you built. In the Fibro Shack, in the back right. of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Nidri. Nidri. No, sorry. North Essendon. Airport West. Airport West. Essendon Fields. Yeah. Lamana. Lamana, you know, we shop at Lamana. Lamana, yeah, yeah, we love Lamana. Beautiful people. Yeah. Um, and now there was a time where I didn't see you, right? There was a few years we were in touch, you know, still spoke to one another. And I think this was I think this was early two thousands, am I correct? Mm-hmm. Give me the dates if I'm you know I don't have the exact date, but early two thousands. Yeah. And Tony, when I met Tony twenty odd years ago, um, what's it called when you put um, ink underneath the epidermis? What's it called? Drawing. The ones that all the baristas have. What's it called? Um, Tattoos, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So can you say this? Yeah. So if you can say Tony Jack the Bear Mance is, um, I don't know what the cool word is, so please excuse me, um, has got lots of drawings on his skin. Yeah, I'm a colourful character. Is that what you call it? I, now, now, like, that, I'm that, saying, that, that, that. I'm saying, like, you know, this guy has got, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I mean, like, this guy is covered, right? When Tony did the video clip as he played my mother, there was no drawings on him. Can I say that? It, well, it's true. It's, 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 it's documented. That so that one. was, that, you know, that was early 2000s. And I think after that video clip, I didn't see you for a while because I, you know, I was out of a deal and I, you know, had to go to the workforce. And yeah. I think that's actually when I started, some of my teaching was, you know, started teaching then. Hmm. I didn't see you. We would speak every now and again, mm-hmm. you know, we still kept in contact. And then I saw Tony would have been, 2004, 2005, or maybe a bit later. Maybe a bit later. And now, which camera am I looking at? But I look right into the camera. So I was speaking to Tony, and I couldn't tell over the phone that Tony started to lose a lot of weight. I think maybe you even told me. And I was like, yeah, you know. Uh, you know, me, I mean, I look like a condom filled with plums, I understood Tony's uh, struggle, but I hadn't seen him. And then I think around 2008, I saw him. He was down to, you'd lost maybe half your weight. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Shaved his head. 
But the thing that stuck out to me was drawings on his skin. I went from seeing Tony without any drawings. Sorry, what are they called? Tattoos. So, you yeah. know, I know it's tattoos. Right? Yeah. From no tattoos to completely covered. You had transformed. Is that, now, is that, that's what you call it? Now, you look at Tony. I mean, you know, you are of proper weight, healthy. What was the martial art you used to do? Or you still do it? Um, I've done several, but the one with the Mossad and everything. Oh yeah, the, uh... no, so, do, do a little Sistema, yeah. What Sistema? A little you bit of Sistema, Sistema. You're, Sistema. you're thinking of Krav Maga. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if there's subtitles, you'll understand what he's saying because I don't understand yeah. what he's saying to me either. Yeah. Whatever, blah, 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 blah. yeah. So he did say uh, martial art, right? So yeah, would, yeah. yeah, and you got fit. <laughs> yes, I did. So now what's happened is, I have become the old Tony. And you've be- <laughs> and I'll become the new David. <laughs> I'll become Look, the new David. That's not, that's not going to work. But so, but you know, I was thinking of getting a tattoo on my back, but I've missed the opportunity because I wanted many years ago to get a tattoo of my back on my back. Yeah. And I wanted to see how it moved over time, but now I'm an old guy. It's, I've missed that opportunity. I wouldn't recommend it. No. No. <laughs> no. But you, you are it. you are like you are you are covered. And your legs as well. Yeah, there's a couple there. Yeah. So the point being, David, the point, the moral of the story is... There's no moral. I don't I don't believe in morals. There's yeah. no morals. No, I just say, no. you know, I, I hadn't seen you for a number of years, yeah. and it's amazing how you transformed. Oh, okay. I'm not well, judging. I'm no, saying... No, you know, no, 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 I take it on board. No, it's actually, thank you. Actually, thank you. Cre- no, thank you. No, no, no. Thank you, because I saw you transform. Well, thank you, my friend. No, 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 no. I thank you. You're having me as a guest. I should be thanking you. Well, no, I, I should be thanking you for coming on as my no, guest. No, 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 no. No, because culturally, please. I need to thank you for asking me. Okay. So thank you. Well, no, and thank you for coming No, 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 no. I can't no. accept your thanks. I can't accept your gratuity. I have to thank you. Okay. Well, can we just thank each other? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Is that... Well... Go on. But no, no. No, I appreciate that. But uh, it was... Quite not embarrassing, but anyhow, but we, we all no no no, but we all go through transformation, mate. That's the whole idea. You, you you said before, right? You said before you made a point of in your teaching. You know, you want to be currently practicing what it is you're teaching. No, I've no 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 no. Hang on, you misunderstood. Go I, on. I have to. I have to practice. I have to do research, so my research is practice led. Okay. So yeah. I make, okay. I compose, well, and then well, I can. Well, as teach. somebody that identifies as being a mentor, I, I need as a to mentor. be as a mental mentor. You need to be uh, leading by example. Th- that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly. what I'm trying to make, yes. right? So yes. yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We right now. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. You got that thing. So what are you working on musically? My PhD. <laughs> are you actually making any records at the moment? Are you bringing my PhD, any? Re- yeah. My PhD is 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 a folio of creative work. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And a dissertation. Yeah. Dissertation. I've never heard that word. That's a, that's, a, that's well, it's a, an exegesis. Okay. If you really want to get technical. Well, okay. So explain that to me. There's um, a dumb cunt that doesn't get it. Help me out here, please. Well, please, David. Please. Well, well, I do. My research is a. A folio of work of music, yeah. and the exegesis is the written component explaining what I've done. Okay. Whereas in a, would you be releasing this stuff? Will any any of these compositions be going out into the public forum as opposed to just? Yeah, exe- of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you you'll put it out as an album or some singles? Yeah, exactly. Or? It's like an album. That's what I've. That's what I'm working on. Yeah. Okay. It's an a, an album of sorts. But I've you know I've I'm always making music. Uh, Lots of projects with other people as well. Lots of collaborations. Yeah, yeah. you've been a great collaborator. <laughs> <laughs> you well, thanks, Tony. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're a great now, collaborator. Now, listen, I just 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 came out of left field now. Back in the day, you used to one you used to work at Octave Records. Octave Records, okay. yeah. Jason Rudeboy and Terence. Terence Ho. Ho. Yeah. Have you seen or heard from any of those two gentlemen? Uh, I I speak to Jason. Jason doesn't live in the country anymore. 
Where is uh, he now? He lives in England? Thailand, I think. He oh, is. really? Okay. Um, is he still involved with music and doing shit over there? No, he works on um, uh, oil rigs. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's doing all right. He'll be doing all right. You know, mad, mad dogs and Englishmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Terence, I was supposed to see about a year. I, I, actually, I, I played a party and he was DJing. But we didn't get a chance to speak properly because, you know, you're in a loud place. So we just said hello. I hadn't seen him for a while. Mm. But then we we're supposed to uh, meet. We got a, a friend, a mutual friend. It was supposed to go after him. It never happened. I can't remember what happened. He, he had to cancel. I had to cancel. Um, so, no, I haven't seen Terrence for a, a couple of years. He was a good DJ back in his day. I'll tell you something. Terrence Ho, and I, I will say this and I'll put it on record, mm. is one of the best technical DJs I've ever come across. Because Terence, Jason, and I used to do a radio show called The Acid Agency. Yep. On Kiss. On Kiss, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the three of us. And, you know, I remember before I even met Terence, I remember going to parties where Terence was DJ. And it's like, I, he was like one of the only DJs that I would actually uh, go to listen to. Mm-hmm. Well, it's um, it's good when you can do that. <laughs> yeah. No, but it is. No, it, it no, it, it is. I, I think um, the. I mean, I'm not a DJ. I've never been a club DJ. I've had an interest. I've been at the periphery of it. I'm also not only, a DJ. Uh, no, because I remember you asked me to remove that uh, thing from your PR. Thing. I, I am certainly not a DJ. But you have, but you have played records. Well, I can also cook, but I'm not a chef. Yeah, but you're still, but you're still in the, you're still programming records in the environment where people are dancing. So what? All right. So Very, what were you? Okay, in that capacity, what were you? Just you were just a human jukebox, were you? Because uh, you weren't taking requests. I don't think people coming up and, or punching fucking numbers in here. Uh, well, I I have DJed, but it's has ah. A- don't get upset. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, we're getting the bottom of this. this is don't, get, don't get so, upset. No, I'm not getting upset. I'm, someone get I'm, Tony a glass of water because he's getting upset. <laughs> no. Don't but, get upset. No, no, I'm not. I have no, DJ, yeah. but I wouldn't certainly not call myself a DJ. Okay. Because? Because I'm not a DJ. Because? Uh... What do you mean? Because I, I don't because know. So not, what? Because you went full, because you went a full time DJ working six gigs a. No, because everybody on the planet is a DJ. Do you buy music or do you own music? Have you played a track, you know, in sequence, one after the other? Then guess Come what? Some. You're a DJ, right? A DJ is not. Uh, oh, I better be careful here. Um, <laughs> uh, hi everyone, how you doing? <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't label myself as a DJ. And the, the one of the okay on a serious note, the reason why, reason why is for a number of reasons, but one of them is because I'm a live performer. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And I have to make that distinction very clear because it's been 25 fucking years of saying to people, I'm not a DJ, you know. Do you see me, you know, playing pre-recorded music? No. You'll see me improvise with equipment, you know, on stage or whatever the, the context is. So, I mean, it's just easy for people to say DJ and I... I understand that and I appreciate that, but I'm not DJ, you know. I never wanted to be a DJ. So when I was starting to make music with the, you know, with the record label and all and all that, I, I realised, uh, you know, a lot of my peers at the time, well, you know, peers now, then, whatever, um, mm. they were DJing their own productions. I guess, I guess today is even easier because you just go from the studio and, it's on a Uzba disc or whatever it is, a yeah. uh, USB, mm. um, and you can just play it. But back, you know, 20, 25 years ago, there weren't CD players. CD players weren't in nightclubs or anything like that. It was records. You had to get records, you know, mm-hmm. made and mastered. And, and predominantly, records were not made in Australia. They were, but let's say they weren't, okay? Yeah. okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you did the mastering for my records. No, don't have a seat. Yeah. They were pressed in the UK or what have you. Mm. So, um, 
because of uh, uh, the context, which was I was making records that were taking so long to get made, you know, uh, and coming back, and it was it was pricey as you know it was expensive as well. It wasn't the making of the records; it was the uh, manufacturing. No, not not even the manufacturing. It was the postage, the shipping. Yeah. You know, so much so that when I was making the records in the UK, they were being distributed out of Germany. I said to them, don't even send them to me. You know, just send me a small packet of them. You know, we're going to do, put it in a couple of record shops in Australia. Who cares, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, so what I was really interested in, because it comes from my, you know, kind of, you know, punk rock background, is that I, I want to get up and perform, you know? DJing is performing it's just hitting play you know oh you have to beat match okay well now you've got technology you can do it for you do you know what i mean yeah. um so i was forced into djing because a lot of places you know didn't understand what you're going to bring your studio and so there were times where i did actually uh dj because i was collecting music on record you know i was buying music on record but my focus was to perform live. Yeah. And once I got traction with that, mm -hmm. then there was really no DJ whatsoever. You know. Do you remember your first gig? Your first paid gig? I remember my first paid gig, yeah. What was it? My first paid gig, I was signed to, not so, I, you know, I did the stuff with um, Mushroom and MDS yeah. or DanceNet, yes. whatever. Mm -hmm. MDS was Mushroom Distribution Services. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think they were having a Christmas party. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, can you DJ? I said, no, I can't. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'll do. All right? This is what I'll do for you. you got a pretty smart smile. Right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I hadn't rehearsed this. I didn't know what was, what was going to be. I'll play live. Oh, yeah, what's that? Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. So I brought a drum machine, you know. 909303 mm. and did it. Yeah. Played for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Right? It was awesome. So literally, I was programming the drum machine on the fly yeah. and it worked really well. Yeah. And that was at the lounge. Mm -hmm. Swanson Street. Swanson Street. Right? Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first times at the lounge. And funny enough, that the lounge, when I was an art student, they had, they had an exhibition of my paintings. Yeah, which was only a short moment before that, only a year or two before that. Because the lounge just, I remember the lounge used to be a penny parlour. Mm. People don't know what pennies are. Though. Pennies was a, a, an Australian colloquialism for video games or pinball machines. So it was a pinball parlour. And I was, when I was a teenager, I was addicted to uh, pinball, not just video games, but actual pinball. Mm. I, I actually, I still to this day, I, I've said to my wife, I really want a really awesome pinball machine. Mm -hmm. You know, not a vintage one. I want like a, you know, a modern one. Yeah. And that would be my dream, you know. Um, anyway, I'm back in the room. Uh, <clears throat> so I remember the lounge was um, a, a, a penny parlor that became a strip joint and then it turned into the lounge. Mm -hmm. And then soon after that, Revolver opened up. And you'll see this because I've done the Revolver uh, 20th anniversary book, and um, really, my the, the first because that set that that gig that I did for MDS was a private party; it wasn't public, yeah. right? even yeah. though I was paid. Mm. But the public one was at Revolver right. on their opening week. Okay, you want to hear the story, don't you? Of course I do. Well, let me get some water. One sec. <laughs> Go to a commercial break. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of one of uh, one of your gigs that you did at Revolver, I remember, was um, when you brought out uh, our friend uh, Finn O'Hanlon. Finbar O'Hanlon. Finbar yes. O'Hanlon. Captain Badass. That, indeed. And uh, Grease Lightning was Phil Brophy on keyboards. Yeah. So my first gig at Revolver was the so Tina uh, Tina, who was the booker, uh, she knew Jason Rude Boy. <clears throat> And Jason had suggested to her that Honey Smack, for Honey Smack to play, mm -hmm. right? Now, I've known Tina back in the Acid House days, the late 80s, mm -hmm. going to, you know, the clubs. 
But she didn't connect me to Honey Smack whatsoever. Because right. Honey Smack was quite ambiguous at that time. Mm. I didn't care about oh saying, Hey, it's me, David Haverfield. How awesome. You know, mm. but there was none of that. All right. Well, there was a bit of it. Uh, so uh Jason said, I'll oh, come and uh, you know, speak to Tina and I went and had a look at um uh when they had a look at Revolver it was being built because I remember Chapel Street and they used to be Waltons. You remember Waltons with the what, I do, I do, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where Waltons used to be, you know, because my my dad used to have a shop across the road and, and all that in the eighties. So I remember mm. that. So we went up and had a look as I were finalising the the you know the build at Revolver and and I was introduced. I was with Jason and, and Tina and Jason says, oh, you know. You know, you get honey smack smack. She goes, yeah, we'd love to get honey smack. But she didn't think, it, she didn't realise it. She goes, well, you know, that's David. She goes, you're honey smack? I said, yeah. She had no idea. It was quite funny. So she said, yeah, we want you to DJ. I said, I'm not DJ. But what I can do for you is play live. Play live. Okay. So again, it was... Still a, a relatively new thing, it was, it was particularly in Australia, let's say. It was, you know, yeah. Live, live electronica, what the, f you know. So kind of, you know, a bit of convincing, but she said, yeah, you know, I'll, you're playing with, I can't remember, I think it was the Mavises. Do you remember the Mavises? I do, yes, I do. Yeah. I think it was, the Mavises was like the headline act, but I can't remember. You know, I definitely did play with the Mavises a couple of times. I don't know if it was that particular night. Mm. Anyway. She said, great, I want you to play live. She goes, how long do you play for? I said, I oh, know, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Like, today, it's like one hour, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I thought that was funny. Um, can't laugh, laughter. So I get to I get to the uh, I get to Revolver early evening. This is the first week, it was the first, it was the opening week. I don't know if it's the opening night because I anyway I'll get to it in a sec. So I get there, they don't even have a table for me to set my gear up on. It's like this kind of higgledy piggledy retro uh, bookshelf and coffee table. I mean, you know, kind of revolvers aesthetic, right? If yeah, you've been there. Yeah. So I just kind of made do, and the sound guy's looking at me like I'm some kind of weirdo. Like, what's this guy got? The stupid, you know, old drum machines and stuff. Just didn't understand. He'd understand. I didn't understand either. Anyway, do the sound check early evening. Some friends come along. And it wasn't a late night because I'm not sure if they had a late license then or anything like that. So it was, you know, it was adult hours, you know. Yeah. You know. Uh, the place filled up. It was jammed. My friends come and they're busting my balls. They want a beer. I'll right, we'll get some beers. All right, I'll get you some beers. So I said to Tina, can I get some beers for my mates? She said, yeah, we don't have drink cards. Just tell the bar staff, you know. Sort it out. Sort it out. So <clears throat> um, I go to the bar, but it is just, it's just rammed. I get to the bar and, you know, they don't know who I am. Why would they, you know? Oh, I've got to find Tina, da, da, da. It's this whole kind of kerfuffle. It's noisy. It's, it's. And then the sound guy's like, oh, you got to go on stage, you know. And I'm stuck here, and the bar person's running around. You know, I said, just take my money. You know, I just threw the money, grabbed the beers, threw my friends, and jumped on stage. Next thing you know, I'm just doing my final check, and I'm about to play. This guy jumps on stage, all right? Quite a bit older. Comes over, and he grabs me, and he says, don't you ever speak to my staff like that again. I'm like, whoa. Right. Oh, you know, realizing, oh, shit, uh, you know, oh, yeah, sorry, you know, um, but not, I don't have really time to explain myself. And then he says, this better work, or this better be good, or something like that. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck. Right. Uh, so I start to play. Right. And I'm thinking, shit. Right. This is now, this is now the test yeah. because I've got a full room of the public. Uh, I've had a guy who must be one of the owners, who was Camillo, right? Mm. I start playing. Ten minutes in, Tina is just at the side of the stage and she is, you know, the crowd is going nuts mm. and she is just like, but the hugest grin, she's like crying with laughter. Yeah. Right? She can't believe it, mm. how, you know. And next thing you know, I see Camillo standing next to her and, you know, he's also beaming and, yeah. right? 
So I'm pointing at my watch and saying, you know, time, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes. She goes, no, keep going. You know, mm. you seem to keep going. And I'm like, far out. So I keep going. And, and I'm not sure whether you know, when you play live and with this kind of vintage gear, there's no, there's limited kind of memory, if it has memory at all. So I'm, I, I'm, you know, constrained by what I've prepared somewhat, you know. I keep going, another 15, 20 minutes. I said, Tina, you know, I'm looking at my watch, you know, like, you know, what do you want me to do? Kind of thing. She goes, keep going, keep going. What do you want me to do? All good. All good. What time do we finish? Eight. Nah, you, you've got you got this story to go. Keep, right. keep going. Anyway, so uh, another 10 minutes passes, and I'm like, Tina, you got to, you know, you got to help me out here. You got to help me out here. She jumps on stage and she's like screaming at me, you got to keep going, you know, you can't stop. Oh, okay, but I'm trying to say to her whilst I'm trying to perform, I've only got, you know, limited resources. At about, I think it was an hour, maybe it was over an hour. I think it was over an hour, if I recall, right? And I just looked at her and I just said, I'm done. You know, like I, I've repeated, not that the audience would know, but I'm saying, I repeat, I'm actually also physically and mentally spent as well, yeah. you know, from doing this, all right? And um, the crowd just were, you know, going. They went ape shit, and uh, Camilla jumps up on stage and kisses me like a proud Italian father. Yeah. All right? And he says, anytime you come and see me, da, da, da. And that was the start of the relationship with Revolver. And, you know, that was almost the, the year zero for uh, Honey Smack as a live performer almost as well. You done much internationally? A little bit. Would you like to do it again? Would you go? Would you would you tour again? Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to go to Helsinki uh, two weeks ago. Oh, okay. For and a festival? No, uh, uh, well, a, a, a conference, a music conference, and do a performance. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I didn't go. The, the it all came about too quickly. So right. Yeah. You got any gigs coming up? Yeah. Where and when? Uh, next Sunday night. Shop local at the it's for Leaps and Bounds Festival. Oh yeah, yeah. At the Spiegel Tent. Yeah. Then I've got another gig. Uh, then on August the second, I'm playing with the Synthy One Hundred, which is a very rare synth. There's only like three operational in the world. It's a synth known for doing the uh, Doctor Who soundtrack okay. or Doctor Who yeah. theme, right? So you're going to be using technology? Very old technology, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's at the... Uh, Creatively. That's at the Melbourne Recital Centre, but that's not a Honey Smack gig. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's me as somewhat as... Me and my colleagues from Interact. Who owns this in this, this particular one? Is it... Uh, the University of Melbourne. Yeah. I see, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's on August the 2nd. Uh, then I think a week or two, a week two later, there's another Honey Smack gig in the city. I think it is. Yeah. Um, so you're active, man. You're active. It's great. Yeah, I'm active. I'm active. I'm alive. I get up and hey, I get up. I get up in the morning and I'm at bangers. Love it. You still got manager? Or are you doing your own thing now? I do my own thing. I, yeah. You know. I, I'm doing my PhD. It's like I've, I can't take every gig that, you know. When you have the, to get the, the young people, young people understand live electronica now because of the whole technology, you know, yeah. hardware yeah. revival. Yeah. Well, it's all coming back. This is wonderful. Frank, I had Frank Cattell on the show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I just spoke, you, when you called me, uh, Frank, well, I was speaking to Frank, you know, because yeah. I'm, uh, I, I've become addicted to um, Eurocrack. I mean, uh, Eurorack, you know, modular synthesis. Yeah. So, you know, he's my, he's my, he's my mentor, you know, he's my confidant. Yeah. You know, I have to speak to him and to, you know, and, and Celestino as well, you know, mm. who is, I was partners with in the Acid Jack. So we're looking at doing the whole Acid Jack thing again. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, banging. More bangers. We only, right. And yeah. Frank Attella can tell you this yeah. himself. Yeah. We only make. Bangers. That's all. That's all that matters, right? Bangers. <laughs> Bring them out. Bangers. Dave, we're going to get out of here.
Yeah, we're gonna, 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 gonna go get some food. I think chicken adventure. Chicken adventure is going to chicken a Sydney Road chicken adventure. Chicken there's adventure. There's got to be one happening at some point, Danny. Chicken adventure. Yeah. Explain the chicken adventure before you go. Chicken adventure is um, actually it was Philip. Truth be known, Philip. It's the, Philip the chicken, the chicken adventure was the creation of one Philip Crickies, where we used to go and get um, that little. There's a little charcoal chicken shop on Sydney Road um, near the corner of Albion Street. And I, I forget, it's it's changed names now. But anyhow, but nonetheless, that's where you go get your, your, char, your charcoal chicken wrap. So we we catch up there and have a chicken adventure. And but then there was the one in Station Street in Fairfield. Well, that, that was yeah. our, that was kind of our take on it. The original, like OG, yeah. OG, OG is, is Sydney Road. Original gangster. Yeah. That's okay. that's that's the birthplace. That's you know, when the when the anthropologists in forty thousand years from now dig up the site and they will find this is where the chicken adventure happened, and kids will be learning about chicken adventures and stuff. Yeah, the chicken and, adventure. So I think we'll go for a Sunday night chicken adventure. Anyway, buddy. Thank you, Tony. Thanks very much. I've mate. over chewed everyone's ear off. Or... Nah. Are, it, they, it, are, you, are you still watching all the way to the end? <laughs> I was well, like, you know, like, like, you know, you how you forward through. I think every week we've been going on an upward. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Excellent. Ah, yeah. oh, shit. What? Ah, oh, okay. Fuck. Yeah. Every week we've been going on an upward trajectory, but today we will probably see the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've had me. The quality of the show has completely, you know, collapsed with uh, well, you know, someone like well, me. Well, what can I say? We, I ran out of options this week, mate. So, you know, but you, you were the. Uh, you're, That's the, right. you're, you're the worst of the bad bunch. I'm the ringer. I'm the, you know. Yeah, a banger. You're a banger. That's who you are. Backers. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. It, it was good. It was good having you on. Best of, when do you finish your PhD? When do you, when do you, well, <laughs> when you reckon, <laughs> That's you, a is, there a time, is there a time limit on this? Of or? course there's a time limit. So when is it, when do you need to get it done by? As soon as possible. I see. All right, then. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you well. We'll have a cele- we'll have a celebratory chicken adventure upon your <laughs> receiving of your doctorate <laughs> and then i'll be referring to you as doctor absolutely David. oh absolutely oh and i'll insist on calling you doctor oh i will insist yes all right uh, i will insist and, uh, thank you right. i think telstra already called me a doctor on my bills yeah. i don't know why do you get do you, do, you, do you get a discount as a doctor you know, you, 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 can get, you, know, you can get professional loans at bank. If you're a do- so if you have a greater earning capacity to pay loans, I'll give you less interest. But poor schmucks like myself, I'm just we've got to acad- pay the... I just, I'm just an academic, you know. No. Well, I'm, I'm happy with if I buy more sins, you know. Buy more sins. All right. Anyway, mate, thank you. Really let's too. T- let's it was t- great. Let's touch hands. <laughs> let's, let's do What's that. What's that? Ah, don't worry about it. It's a, yeah, it's a story in itself. I, we'll talk about our chicken adventure. Anyway, hey... Thanks very much. Thanks to everyone who was uh, watching and participated tonight. It was wonderful. It was good fun, mate. But next, you know, next time when we catch up, we don't have to do it under the guise of, you know, it has to be, you know, with cameras and shit. All right? So it's, uh, you know, it's not a small setup here. It's a large setup. That's reasonable. That's Backline Project. You can blame him. That's that's Thomas Overend's fault. Hello, Thomas. And, Thanks, uh, Thomas. And Tennille's partner's fault, Tenille. too. And you know. Joe. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Thank Thanks you, for Joe. being here. we got a little support crew. Anyway. So thanks very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, it was great having you, and we'll look forward to your company next week. And as always, say, so, Dave, yeah, be nice to each other, and, but uh, more importantly, be nice to yourself, motherfucker. Love you, fucker. You're awesome. Love you guys too. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.